Hi everyone and welcome back to my plot. I thought it was about time for another little plot update because I haven't done one for a while. Actually that's a lie, I did one last week and it was really really windy and when I got home and went through the video there was so much wind noise that I wasn't happy with putting it up with the quality that it was at. So I've decided to redo it today. Uh, as you can probably hear it is another breezy day, it's not quite as windy as it was the other day. Um, so unfortunately there might still be some wind noise in this one as well. Uh, unfortunately I can't do anything about that at the minute. Um, if I had the funds I'd buy one of these posh camera setups with you know, wind reducers and special microphones and things like that. But I don't have the money for that at the minute so we're just going to have to put up with a little bit of uh, wind noise I'm afraid. So if you're wearing headphones to watch this, beware. <laughs> but yeah, I do apologise if there is a bit of wind noise. Um, it's one of the things about being outside, I guess. So um, I'm going to give you a plot update today and show you how everything is coming along. Right, I'm going to start with an update on the strawberry bed. Um, it's looking okay. There are a couple of strawberries there and there that unfortunately I don't think have survived being moved. They seem uh, pretty dead if I'm honest. I did spot one runner over there that survived me turning the beds somehow. So I may actually dig that runner out and replace one of these two ones that looks dead. Um, other than that the rest of the strawberries are looking good. Uh, the bigger ones down here have started producing some flowers now so that's always a good sign. Um, and in general apart from the two that I say have died off I'm pretty happy with how the rest of the bed is looking for the minute. These two beds here they're both still empty but I have dug them over a little bit and I've pulled out a lot of the weeds. Um, they're going to need another dig over before I can plant anything but what I've got allocated for this bed and this bed is going to be cabbages, kale and purple sprouting broccoli. So they're not going to need to actually go in for a little while yet so I've got plenty of time to get these properly dug over, properly weeded and properly ready for planting the cabbages, broccoli and kale. If I get them done sooner, I may sow a fast growing crop such as radish or a little bit of lettuce in there um, just to make use of the bed because it's a bit of silly to have it sitting empty but um, we'll see what happens there if I've got time to do it. So if, if I haven't got time, I'll just use it for the cabbages and plant them out in a month or two into these beds when they've been done properly. So that is these two beds here. Moving back to my plot as a whole, one of the biggest changes that I have done is I have put down some wood chip paths. Um, I was debating between trying to get grass pathways or wood chip pathways. A lot of people commented on my previous videos and recommended wood chip and in the end I did go with wood chip. What I've done first is actually lined my pathways with some uh, carpet samples that I picked up free on Facebook. Um, and they've worked really well. I'm just trying to put them down first to suppress the weeds and stop the weeds growing through. Uh, in the long run, I want to brick them in, but again, it's all about funds and bricks are expensive, so I am going to leave them as wood chip for the time being. Um, and then when I get the money or the time, I will add some bricks in to kind of keep it a little bit more contained. But at the minute, I'm just happy with having the wood chip just to try and keep the grass and the weeds at bay. And I think it looks a lot neater now as well, which is great. <laughs> so moving down to this bed, I have planted two rows of spinach. And this year spinach has actually been a bit of a pain for me. Um, normally I have no issues with growing it and it grows really quickly, really easily, and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, this year it hasn't come up so well. This is the first row that I sowed. And I did actually have to re-sow that because I waited and waited and absolutely nothing was coming up. So I don't know if the ground was still too cold because of the weather we've had 
or if the seeds are a bit old or if something was eating them, I don't know. So I had to re-sow that row and it is starting to come up now. There's little ones sprouting up but it's still not growing as well as I would have hoped. There is still gaps in the row where it hasn't come up. So what I might do is sow some at home and then transplant it out here just to make sure I've got a nice long full row. And the second row here that I sowed a little later because I was trying to successionally sow it, there is the odd one coming up. But again, they're not all up yet. So I'm going to keep an eye on that and see what happens because I love spinach and the last thing I want is an allotment with no spinach. So if I have to sow some at home and transplant it, that is what I will do. And the other thing that I've had problems with this year is my tulips which are just behind me. Now most, most people who know me know that I love my tulips and I've been really looking forward to these growing because I chose some really pretty pastel colours new for this year. But unfortunately, they're really not doing a lot. And everywhere I go now, I'm seeing people's tulips in full bloom looking fantastic. And mine are just not. I say I can only actually see two flower heads, one there and one there. And when I look into the tulips, it actually looks like the rest of the flower heads have all either rotted away or been eaten by something. Which is really disappointing because I was so looking forward to them. But I honestly don't think they're going to do a lot this year. I was actually going to pull them out today, but then I've come up today and I've seen that I've got two little flower heads. So I'm going to wait and hope that those two bloom. And then that'll be two more than I was actually expecting to have about a week ago. But it is disappointing. But I will dig out the bulbs and I'll dry them out and I'll plant them again next year and hope that they'd fare better. Now something that I am happier with is this three-tier planter that I got. Um, and things are growing in this, <laughs> which is good. Down here at the very front, I've got one row of spring onions. And they're looking great. There's a little gap there, but I'm not too bothered about that. And today I'm also going to sow a second row just behind them because I like to successionally sow where possible so that I don't have everything ready in one go because having everything ready in one go would just lead to waste which I obviously don't want. Moving up to the middle tier I've got two rows of carrots and again they're coming up and looking good. They're going to need thinning, they are sowed a little bit thicker than I would have done myself but my son actually sowed these for me and you know children can often be a little uh, heavier handed with sowing seeds than perhaps adults would be but I don't mind because it's just nice to get him up here doing something and he's got a nice straight row and they'll be easy enough to thin so I'll probably thin them out today as well actually just to uh, get a nice neat row and get them thinned before the uh, carrot fly become too much of a problem. Moving up to the top row which I'm hoping you can see I've got one row of and I am going to pronounce this wrong, Celtus, C-E-L-T-U-C-E. -E. Um, it's a new vegetable for me this year. As I say, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, I've got a few coming up. It's a little bit sporadic, the germination. I've got one there and a clump there and one there, but then some gaps. So I may re-sow in the gaps because these have been up for a while now. So. I don't know if there's a problem with the others. I shall try re-sowing if nothing shows up in a few days time and see how that goes. Right, and the next thing I think I'll show you is my lettuce and salad bed. So this bed here is the one that I have allocated for lettuce and salad um, vegetables such as beetroot and pak choy I'm growing here as well. What I've got in at the minute is one half row of Lolo Bianco lettuce. Again, that's not coming up yet either. Um, not a lot seems to be coming up at the minute for me. Hopefully I've just been too impatient and it'll be showing itself in a few days. Because um, the lettuce next to it as well, it's a cost lettuce, I can't remember the name of it. Um, but there's no real signs of that coming up yet either. This row here is going to be Tom Thumb lettuce. Uh, which is one that I enjoy growing purely because it reminds me of growing with my granddad. We always used to sow Tom Thumb lettuce together, so every year I try and get a row of that in somewhere. Um, and I do enjoy eating it, so 
That's two bonuses. I haven't sewed that yet. I'm probably going to get that in today. And then lastly, at the back, I've got a row of pak choy. And that is coming up quite nicely. I'm hoping the slugs don't try and feast on it, but at the minute that is growing and it's growing in a nice straight row and it's looking good. And eventually, just behind that row, I'm going to have one row of beetroot as well. Um, yeah, that is the salad bed. I'm going to extend these rows. I say I'm calling this a half row because it goes further back to do another half and I will just sow more of each variety. But again, successionally sowing. So I've started with half rows and then I'm going to take it up to full rows in a couple of weeks, um, just to give these first lot a chance to grow first again so I don't get everything coming up at once. Now here we have a bed that I am happy with, <laughs> that seems to have gone to plan and is doing what it should be doing. And this is the onions. Uh, I've got red onions at the front. It's just a couple that don't seem to be sprouting, but the rest are all growing now. Weed there. That's it. And in the middle, I've got just normal white onions. Just gonna let that wind pass before I speak. Yeah, so I've got red onions, white onions, then right at the back, where you can see the larger spacing, I've got some giant onions growing, uh, the Kelsai variety, and I put those in last week. I got them as little plug plants. Um, all the rest I've grown from sets, but the giant ones I did get as plug plants. And I've managed to get 10 in. I did buy 40, because they came in packs of 40, so I'm gonna have to try and find somewhere to at least squeeze some of the rest of them in because otherwise it's going to be a waste but I went with the exact spacing for these um, just because I'm trying to grow them for the village show a little bit of fun and to see if I can grow giant onions because it just sounds like fun um, so I followed the spacing exactly and I managed to get 10 of them in there at the back so yeah this is the onions <laughs> which yeah I'm definitely happy with how the onions are going so far this year and what I have here to my left is a polygrow tunnel that I've put up and it's got um, black weed resistant material underneath it. And this is where in the long run I'm gonna have my watermelons. I've put down the black weed resistant material for two reasons. The first is to try and warm the soil because watermelons obviously coming from a tropical climate like warm soil. So I completely line the inside with a black material to try and absorb the sunlight and make that soil that bit warmer for them for when they are transplanted out to give them that little, little extra help and head start. Um, the second reason is an obvious one, it's just to suppress the weed growth. Weed resistant material, suppressing weed growth. That's kind of, one, uh, kind of an obvious one, isn't it? <laughs> and then I put this polytunnel tent up already. Um, for the same reason, just to try and warm up the air, warm up the soil. I'm trying to give them as much of a head start as possible, which is what I did last year, and it worked last year. We had watermelons. So I've done the same this year. If something works one year, do it again the next. <laughs> and then to the right here, I have got the pea and bean frame, and I have now actually sowed some peas and beans as well. I've started off in the far corner with some mange too, some spring blush mange too, um, which is new for me. Um, I loved the pods. The picture drew me in. The pictures always draw me in. I love looking at pictures of vegetables, like some strange person. But they've got a beautiful sort of pink touch to the pods. And I love mange too and sugar snap peas and things like that. So I have sown them. And then next to them, I've got just some normal garden peas. Um, I'm hoping they're all going to come up okay. I have direct sowed them. It's the 1st of May today, and I sowed them last week. So perhaps a little bit early, but I was banking on the weather staying nice. And us not getting any more frosts. So we'll see if uh, I'm lucky or not. <laughs> And then the last two poles, there and there, and the same on the opposite sides, I have planted some French beans. And that is, that is all planted up now. I'm just waiting for them to come up. Nothing's showing yet, but 
I say I only planted them a few days ago, so I wouldn't expect them to be showing yet. And when they do, again, I'm going to watch out for slugs, snails, pests, anything that's potentially going to eat them. Because I don't want anything other than me eating them. And if I do get slugs and snails, I've got loads of sharp sand left over um, from a project I was doing last year. And I might just do little rings of sharp sand around each seedling because I've heard that, that can deter slugs. So I'll give it a go and see if that works. Yeah, and that is uh, this section of the allotment. Right, now we're moving down to the flower patch. This end of the allotment is already looking incredibly overgrown. The grass is growing so quickly and I haven't had a chance to get up here and trim it because it's been so wet. Um, but I've got a few flowers in now as well. Um, I went to a garden show a couple of weeks back and bought the Cosmos plants to add a little touch of colour. And then I was at a boot sale last weekend and I picked up these just because I loved the colours on them and I thought they'd look pretty up here. I can't remember what these are called. I'm sure somebody can tell me. <laughs> um, the rest of the flower patch is looking good. The um, dahlias under the cloches there are growing really well. Um, I'm surprised how quickly they've come up actually, but they are, they're looking really good. Um, the peony is growing. Um, somebody advised me that they don't like root disturbance, so not to expect too much from it this first year. So I'm not expecting too much from it, but anything it does will be a bonus, as long as it doesn't die. And it's not dying yet, so that's cool. Um, and the rest, yeah, the astilbe I can see over there, again it's growing. I've got something coming up here. Now I did plant um, freesias in this sort of area, but I've got a feeling that could be a leftover gladioli bulb from last year. So that's going to be a little bit of a surprise to see what that actually turns out to be. And again, this patch needs weeding. I will get on the weeding. I need to, otherwise it's going to get overgrown so quickly. But um, I'm just more into planting things and getting everything planted first, and then I can concentrate on weeding. That'll be cool. So yeah, that is the flower patch. Got the chives just down here. I'm hoping you might be able to see these, but they're um, coming into bloom. Well, starting to. They've got the little flower heads on them, and I love the chive flowers. So they're going to look really pretty as well. Yeah, so that is the flower patch. And I thought I'd just give you an update on the giant carrots. They're not looking especially giant at the minute, but everything has to start somewhere. And the seedlings are coming up, which is excellent. So I'm going to thin them out and then leave them to hopefully do their thing and grow for me. And then the last thing for today is this little area here. I have finally fixed my archway, which I'm very pleased about. Um, it was a right pain to do it. It was really a two person job getting these canes up, but there was just me. So it became a one person job, which made it about 10 times harder. But that is up now. We had a lot of strong wind yesterday and I was worried that I was gonna come down here and find it had blown down, but it is still standing. If I'm being critical, it's slightly move forward so I may try and tie it back in a little tighter but the main thing is it's still up and I'm going to be growing sweet peas up the sides this year. I did that last year and it was so nice in the summer to just walk through an archway of sweet peas because you've got the gorgeous scent of them and you've got the beauty of looking at them and it was just lovely so I'm going to do the same again this year. Down to my left are the raspberries uh, I know that I should have cut the old canes down. Um, please don't tell me that because I know I should have done. I didn't get round to it. I didn't get time to get up here. And I don't want to cut them down now because they're growing. And I don't want to do pruning while something's growing because I think it might potentially damage it. So I'm going to leave them as they are. Mentally tell myself off and make sure that at the end of this growing season I do cut them down like they should have been cut down. <laughs> Other than that we've got the little lavender hedge here which looks like something might have sat in it. 
perhaps a cat or a fox or something and something sat in that not me <laughs> um, but that's looking nice and I've got dug over the ground in front of it which I am probably gonna grow tomatillos in so I grew tomatillos last year and they were fantastic they did really well and I made some lovely salsa verde with them and I definitely want to grow them again this year and I can't think of anywhere else to put them. I'd rather have them down that end of the allotment with the vegetables and keep this for maybe flowers or a tree or something. But there's no other space for the tomatillos, so I think they're going to go in there because I definitely want them. So yeah, that is today's update. That's where I am with the allotment now. Um, today what I'm going to be doing is sowing some Wolossi beans. Um, there was something else. Oh, so the Tom Thumb lettuce and probably another row of spring onions. So they are today's jobs. But I hope you've enjoyed the update. Um, certainly enjoyed doing it. It's been a little while, I say, since I've done the last one, so a lot's probably changed. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's tour. And if you have, then a like or a subscribe would be even better. <laughs> There's my shameless self-promotion bit there. But yeah, thank you for watching and I shall see you guys next time. Bye for now.